You're so cute on your little scratch pad bed. You want to be in today's video? Slow blinks. Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and in today's video, I wanted to tell you about some of the personal observations I've seen by feeding puppy different varieties of meat in his raw food diet. If you are new to this channel, Puppy is my cat, and we talk a lot here about raw food diets for cats, as well as fitness and nutrition and health and stress management tips for humans. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, then just make sure to click that subscribe button below as well as the little bell icon that's right next to it because we do put out videos every cat or day. Now I did do the best I could to get Puppy involved in this video. How are you feeling today? Because I know a lot of you love to see him involved in the videos, but you want to talk about your food today? It just didn't work out. So today I'm going to talk to you about four different types of raw food blends that I have fed puppy and what I've noticed in him when feeding him these different kinds of foods. Now keep in mind that all of the different types of mixtures of meats that I'm gonna talk about today do provide the same benefits as the raw food diet in general. And if you're not sure what those benefits are or if you're new to raw food for cats, then make sure to watch my five benefits of raw food for your cats video, which I will link up in that eye icon right up there or in the description below. So the first variety of raw food I'm going to talk about or raw meat I'm going to talk about is what I consider to be the baseline, and that is using chicken thighs. If you've already seen my original how to make raw cat food video, then you've seen that I do use chicken thighs as the main muscle meat in that video. That's also a recipe I suggest as the go-to and a good starter, because chicken thighs are typically the easiest meat to find. It's less expensive, and by the way, if you're wondering about how much it costs, to make raw cat food, I will link that video in the description below as well. Now you might hear a lot of people talk about the importance of providing your cat with a different variety of meats and switching things up every once in a while. And that is important because you want to see how your cat responds and the different things that you observe, like I'm gonna talk about today, but it's also a matter of what you realistically have access to. So just understand that a raw food diet for your cat is better than not feeding your cat a raw food diet. And that's even considering if you only have access to one particular kind of meat like chicken thighs. So variety number two that I tried with puppy, turkey thighs. Now, if you've watched my second how to make raw food video where I showed you how to make it without a grinder, I also used turkey thighs in that video and I only used turkey thighs and I do suggest against it and here's why. The main and nearly immediate thing that I noticed when feeding puppy this turkey only blend was that he was unsurprisingly sleeping all the time. He would basically just go eat his food. I feed him twice a day. He would have his food and then he would sleep the rest of the day in the same exact spot. And it wasn't even in his fun, usual sleeping positions either, which I share in the How Cats Sleep videos that I've posted. Now, if you know about turkey and you know about tryptophan, which is the amino acid in turkey, then this is definitely a factor. And I'm going to put out another video with some more info about turkey and tryptophan and how it can affect your cat and how it can even benefit your cat. But yes, the main observations with the turkey only food was that he was really sedated and as a result of sleeping so much, he had more of that crusty eye discharge coming out because they tend to have more of that when they sleep more. If the cat discharge in the eyes, it is normal. It can be abnormal only if you notice it's yellow or green and then you definitely wanna take your cat to the vet because that could be a sign of an infection. But if you consider your cat's breed or how much your cat is sleeping or if there are allergens in the air or even the type of eyelids that your cat has, having some sort of slightly brown and crusty discharge is normal, so it's not much to worry about, but I did notice that it was pretty excessive when he was eating the turkey diet because he was sleeping all the time. As for the third variety of meat that I have tried with puppy, this was a half and half mix of chicken thighs 
and lamb. And the number one thing I have to point out about this that isn't so much an observation in him as it is just in the factor of making it was that lamb is really expensive and especially a good quality lamb. It jacked the price up of his food quite a bit. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna spoil him and get this lamb. Like, I'll try it out, watch him love it, and then I'll be like, oh, I have to buy this all the time because he loves it and he's thriving and he became some kind of like leopard on it. But truth be told, he didn't really seem to like it that much. He just didn't inhale it like he usually does his food. And I also noticed that that eye discharge, even though he wasn't sleeping as much as the turkey food, he still had kind of excessive eye discharge. And that's also when I kind of noticed some cat acne coming back, which I will talk about in a separate video. So all in all, when it came to making him food with half lamb and half chicken thighs, it was comparable to just doing the chicken thighs, which was way less expensive. And really, when it came to his temperament or his appearance or anything else, there wasn't that big of a difference in his health or anything else like that by doing lamb and chicken thighs versus just chicken thighs. And let me just point out that I'm talking about experience with puppy only. So maybe your cat will react a different way and really thrive off certain meats, whereas this was puppies experience and reaction to these different kinds of meats. Now on to the fourth blend of meat variety that I have made puppies raw food with. This one, I believe, so far is the holy grail of puppies food mix. And I'm going to make a video on how to make this variety coming up next month. So this would be half chicken thighs and half beef. And specifically, I get the London broil cut beef. One, because it's one of the less expensive ones, but it's also really easy to prepare. I actually cut it with a knife into chunks and it cuts really easily because um, like I mentioned before, I chop his food up now instead of blending it so he gets those chunks to chew on. Basically with the beef and the chicken mixed together, he really, really thrived. I don't know how else to explain it except he seems more youthful, he's more active, he's more playful, but he's also more affectionate and it was almost immediate. Not only that, but his eye discharge is almost gone. It's almost non-existent. And it's not like he's sleeping any less. He's still, he's a cat. He naps throughout most of the day. But overall, I've noticed a huge difference by giving him a meat or beef, I should say, and chicken thigh blend. It's almost like it amplified all of the benefits that raw food in general already provides. So his fur is softer, he seems like he's less stressed out, his temperament is better, he's more lovey. And I'd love to hear too, for any of you guys, what particular blends you found in raw food making and the meat that you use that you've noticed your cats have really seemed to thrive off of. So make sure to tell me in the comments below. Now, the two last meats I'm going to talk about are pork and rabbits. I do want to try rabbit for a puppy, but I haven't just for the simple fact that I haven't been able to find it where I've lived. So I did hear that there's places you can order from online that will send you raw frozen rabbit. Um, if you guys have suggestions of where you think I should reach out to to potentially get that and make you a video on how to prepare that, then please leave it in the comments below because I would love to try that and then show you guys how to do it. When it comes to pork or pig, something about it just tells me that that's not an ideal food for puppy to eat. And if you research and look up some things, a lot of people feel as though pork is not the ideal food to use in raw cat food. There are bad bacteria that are potential in any kind of raw meat you use, but it seems to be a little more prevalent in pork. All right, guys, those are the different varieties of mixtures of meat that I have fed puppy thus far in his raw food diet journey. Please remember to click that thumbs up below if you liked this video or found it interesting or helpful, and also to click that subscribe button if you would like to learn more each week. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching and for being a part of the Cat Lady Fitness channel. We appreciate you so much and hope that you are enjoying the content that we are sharing with you. And also thank you for the patience as we're setting up a more permanent filming space. So until next week, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.